All right, so this lead code question is called maximum depth of binary tree. It says given a binary tree, find its maximum depth. The maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from the root node down to the farthest leaf node. Note, a leaf is a node with no children. All that means is when we see the binary tree, we just see how far down we can go. And in this case, we can go down three nodes, one, two, three. So that's the answer. All right, so what we first need to notice about this is that not only is the outer tree a tree, but also every subtree is also a tree. So this is a tree, so is this, so is this, so is this, and so is this. Knowing that, we can say that what we need to do is we need to split every tree in half and find out what's the maximum depth of each half. I'll show you what I mean. What's the depth of this node? It's just one. But when you combine it with its parent node, it now has a depth of two. One plus one gives you two. That's the maximum depth of the left side. Let's do the same thing with the right side. What's the depth of this? Well, that alone just has a depth of one, but it also has a parent, and the parent has a left and a right side. So what's the depth of the left side of its parent? Well, the parent itself is one, and the child is one, so that would give us two for the left side of 20. But we're not done yet, because that also has a parent node. The parent node of 20 is three, so we have to add another one here. So what's the total depth of the right half of the node three? It's one plus one plus one, which gives us a maximum depth of three. So now that we've broken all the subtrees up in half, and we've broken the root in half and found the depths of each side, all we have to do now is find the max of those two. So what's the maximum of its left side, which is two, or its right side, which is three? Three is greater, so that's our answer. The maximum depth is three. All right, let's get to the code. What lead code has given us is a function named max depth that takes in a root. A root just signifies the entire binary tree. So what we need is an inner function that breaks every tree into halves and returns whichever half is deeper. That'll look like this. We'll have an inner function named max nodes. It'll accept a node, which is any binary tree, and the sum, which is the running total of the depth at that point. And it'll return the maximum depth when you take into account its left side and its right side. So let's say we're talking about our binary tree on the left. What would the sum be so far? Right now we actually haven't called this function so we need to instantiate the sum at zero. So we'll call this function by saying return at the very end the answer when we started off with the sum of zero and which node we're gonna pass in? We're gonna pass in the root, which is our binary tree on the left that starts with the number three. Now that we know that our current sum is zero, we have to do one more thing. We'll say if the node that's passed in is nothing, we'll just return that sum. So if we instead imagine that we passed in a binary tree that was just null, what would the sum be? It would be zero because we've instantiated the sum at line 21 as zero. Also, think of it this way. 
Let's say we're traversing down the binary tree and counting up the nodes. We'll say this node is valid, so this sum is one. This node is valid, so the sum is two. At what point can we return that sum? Can we return it now? No, not yet, because we don't know if the node we're on has children. So what we have to do is we have to keep going down the tree. So we'll go down again. Does this node have a value? No, it doesn't, so nothing is added to the sum. We move over to its right side. Does this node have a value? No, so we can't add that to the sum either. But now that we've gotten to the end of that part of the binary tree, we know that we have our total sum for that half. And how do we know that? because the node is null. And that's what it says on line 14. All right, let's get rid of these. Okay, so let's just walk through the solution from beginning to end. On line 21, we're passing in our binary tree with a current sum of zero. That calls line 13. So now that that's called, we're on line 14 and we check, is our node null? No, it's not because we're on the number three. So now what the next line is gonna do is it's gonna split this binary tree into a left half and a right half. But as it does that, it adds one to the sum. Why? Because we're on a valid node. So the sum so far of the left side is one now it goes down to the next node. Is that null? If it were, we can return our total, but it's not null. So we're gonna add one to our total and then pass in the left and right children of this. All right, so we pass in the left child of this and we're on line 14. Is the left child of nine null? Yes, it is. So we'll return the sum. The sum at this moment is two but we also have to check its right node. So on the second half of line 18, we'll pass in its right node. After we pass it in, we'll be on line 14. Is its right node null? Yes, it is. So we'll return the running total of the sum at that point. The running total of the sum at that point is still two. So now when we look at line 18, it's saying, give me the max of either two or two, and it doesn't matter because two is the max. So right now, the max of the left side of this binary tree is two. Because of the way we're using recursion, after that's done, we're back up to the number three. We've already passed in its left side, so we need to pass in its right side. Remember right now at this stage, the sum of the right side is zero. What if we look at the equation, not only are we passing in its right side, we're also adding one to the sum. So our sum on the right side is one so far. All right, so we pass in its right side, which is the node with the number 20. So now we're in line 14. Is this null? No, it's not. Line 18 says we have to pass in its left side. The left side is the number 18, and we're adding another one to the sum because the number 20 is a valid node. So now we have to pass in its left side and its right side. What's its left side? The number 18. Is 18 null? No, it's not. So now we have to pass in its left and right side, but we can't forget to add another one to the sum. What's 18's left side that we passed in? It's null. So that brings us to line 15. It's gonna return our current sum of the right side, which is the number three. But we also have to check the right side of 18. We pass that into max nodes and we say, is that null? Well, yes it is. So that's gonna return the sum. What's the sum? It's still the number three. 
So now on the recursive call before that, when it said what's the max of 18's left and right side, it's the max of either 3 or 3, which is 3. But we're not really complete yet because we haven't checked 20's right side. So at this point, since we're on the number 20, the sum up until here was only 2. So when we check the right side of 20, what's the right side of 20? Null. So it returns the sum up to that point. The sum up to that point was only 2. So now it's going to compare the sum of this to the sum of this. And what's the max of those two? It's 3. So the max of the entire right side is 3. And the final thing it's going to do is now it's going to compare the max of these two numbers. We've determined that the left side has a maximum depth of 2 and the right side has a maximum depth of 3. So what's the max of 2 and 3? It's 3. And that's our answer. So let's run the code, see how we did. Forgot to finish off this function. Try that again. And I forgot to name this properly. All right, so is accepted. Let's submit. All right, so our solution was faster than about 78% of other JavaScript submissions. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. See you next time.